Hi, I'm Sabine Yaakov. This presentation is entitled The Effect of Heatsink Thermal Impedance on MOSFET Peak Current Capability. This is a joint work with Evgeny Smidoch. Let me say a few words about the background. Now, heatsink are required to lower the temperature resistance of power MOSFETs for keeping the junction temperature at safe level. Now, this presentation explains the role of thermal impedance of the heatsink in protecting the transistor when exposed to high peak current and proposes a simulation approach for choosing a heatsink for a given application. Now, please watch for a forthcoming video on the proposed method for extracting the thermal impedance model of a heatsink. In this presentation, I'm just assuming that the model is given because I don't want to load this uh, video with too many details. Let me start off with some basics of uh, thermal modeling. I'm showing here a MOSFET transistor sitting on a heatsink. This is the heatsink. This is now the thermal pad and the conventional method of emulating this thermal system is an electrical equivalent circuit in which the current is the power, the resistance is the thermal resistance, and voltage is the temperature. So what we see here is we have the power coming into the system. This will be the junction temperature. This is the thermal resistance within the transistor between the junction and case. And then this is the thermal pad between the case and the heatsink. And this is now the heatsink between the heatsink and the ambient, and the ambient is represented by a voltage source. Now this equivalent circuit is suitable for the static case, while for the dynamic case in which you have transient, you have to include the capacitance, the heat capacity of the various element, which is represented here in the electrical representation by capacitance, electrical capacitance, this will be the capacitance of the transistor itself, the heat capacity of the transistor, and this will be the heatsink. Now the relationship between the electrical and the thermal capacitances can be seen here. The electrical is coulomb per volt, while in the case of the heat capacitance it's joule per degree centigrade. So here I'm showing a generic general cover uh, ladder type thermal model of the system which is uh, composed of three parts here. We have the MOSFET, we have the thermal pad, and then we have the heatsink. Again, I'm not showing how to extract the thermal model of the heatsink. Let me just point out that we have here the total capacitance and then we have here the resistance within the aluminum itself and this is the thermal resistance between the heatsink and air. This is actually the heat transfer between the heatsink and the ambient. And here I'm showing like 50 degree ambient and this will be the thermal power fed to the system. I'm going to demonstrate a use of this model by considering a heatsink of this type. This is the heatsink and here are the sizes about 60 millimeter on say 60 millimeters about and i'm choosing here an operating point which is like four degrees per watt and this will be for a certain airflow shown here this is like the point that i'm assuming now the weight of this uh, heating is 18 gram and again the thermal resistance is four degree per centigrade watt and this uh, is made of aluminum. Now for demonstration I'm using an infinium transistor, it's a power MOSFET and here is the thermal impedance. I'm not going into the details here, you can find some of the details in other videos in my YouTube channel and also it's going to be discussed in this uh, forthcoming video how to extract the model and let me just point out that the fact that this line is not straight means that you need more than one section for the model so that it will be a cover model leather type with a number of sections. So here is the model with the numbers in it. Here are the parameters of this model. Again this is the MOSFET itself and I'm showing here a total resistance. This is from the datasheet of 
0.4 plus 0.3 degrees per watt. This is these two resistances. The, the total capacitance is 200 plus 5, 205 millifarad. Now this is the thermal pad, and the thermal pad is assumed to be like 0.7 degrees per watt. And here is now the heat sink. Again, the heat sink is, uh, has two sections. This is the aluminum itself, and this is between the heat sink and air. And this is the major thermal resistance because the aluminum has a very low thermal resistance. Now this uh, resistance between the heat sink in air is uh, 4 degrees per centigrade, as we have said. And I'm assuming that the total weight is uh, like 20 farad. Now here is a typical response of this uh, model to a power pulse, power loss pulse. We have a 15 watt pulse of 60 seconds. And here we see the temperature of the junction. This is temperature, the volts represent the temperature. And we see here actually two sections to the rise of the temperature. We have a fast jump. This is the MOSFET and the thermal pad by themselves. Now the time constant of these components, the thermal time constant is short. So therefore, this is a very fast jump as compared to the increase in the temperature due to the heatsink, okay? This is the effect of the heatsink protecting the transistor during this transient. And in this case, the maximum temperature is about, what, 95 degrees. You can get a lot of information with this model. Now, this is the case that you have already the heatsink. For example, you can see here what is the maximum temperature that you reach for a different pulse width. Okay, this would be like 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and this is like 120 seconds, and this is again the junction temperature. So this is a very useful information. And you can also uh, do some other things. For example, here, I'm assuming a limit of 140 degrees centigrade, and I'm showing here the response for different power level, power pulse level. And so I can see that for 35 watt pulse, this system will sustain 60 seconds until the temperature rises to 140 degree. But if the power is say 20 watt, then of course the system can sustain a much longer pulse like about 300 seconds. Now the question is whether you really need a multi-stage model or you can get by with one section, okay? So I'm comparing this five-stage model with this uh, single stage. And here I'm showing the result. Well, it's pretty good, but of course, if you'd like to get a better estimate, then you might as well use a multi-stage ladder rather than a one-stage. And here is actually the impedance as a function of frequency. This is the impedance, the thermal impedance of the heatsink. What we see here is the effect of the heatsink itself, of the weight, and uh, it's a low frequency, of course, response. And then we see here the aluminum itself, which is a much higher frequency, and then, of course, at high frequency, it goes down. Well, this is of limited use. We are more interested usually in the time domain rather than the frequency domain response of a heatsink. So let me now move to perhaps a more important section and that is how to choose a heatsink. Now I'm starting with some requirements. Suppose we have a continuous power loss of 10 watt thermal power and then we have a peak power of 30 watt and then we want the system to sustain this peak power for at least 60 seconds with a maximum temperature of 130. So this is just an example how we can choose a heatsink. So here is some basic relationship of the material itself. I'm assuming an aluminum heatsink. This is the specific gravity, specific heat, thermal conductivity, and thermal resistance from which you can find this rule of thumb which is very important to get a feeling of what is the heatsink that you are choosing. And that is the relationship between the electrical capacitance and the weight of the aluminum, okay? So what we find from here is that one farad is 
equal to 1.1 gram of heatsink. So this gives you an idea of what type of a heatsink you are actually choosing. I'm starting off with one stage, just as a first step. And the idea is to get a first estimate and then to move to a more elaborate model of a multi-stage uh, ladder. In this presentation, for interest of time, I'm just showing this first step only. So one way to go is to select a number of capacitances, this will be weights, and scan over different thermal resistances. You can use LTSPICE to collect all this data with uh, performance analysis. And here I'm showing now a selection of different sizes in terms of weight of heat sinks. This would be like 10 farad, which is equal to 11 gram, 50 farad, 55 gram, and then 200 farad, 220 gram. And here we have a stepping of the thermal resistance. So what I'm finding here is that for a limit of 130 degree centigrade, if you choose a 10 farad capacitance or 11 gram weight, then you need a thermal resistance of 1.2. However, if the weight is much larger, however, with a much heavier heatsink, this is 220 gram, you can get by with a thermal resistance of 3.3. So there is a trade-off here between the weight and thermal resistance. The larger the weight, the larger could be the thermal resistance. With a smaller weight, you need quite a low thermal resistance. So what's the difference between these two? And here I'm showing the two cases. This is like the 10 farad case and this is 200 farad case. And what we see here that due to the lower weight or mass or thermal capacity, the recovery of the junction temperature, this is the jun junction temperature, is much faster with the lighter heating. So if you have a heavy heating that you can get by now with a larger thermal resistance, the recovery here is very slow. So if you have another pulse coming in, then the average will start rising, while here you are ready for a next pulse. So the time between the pulses could be shorter. So this is an advantage of a lighter heatsink with a smaller thermal resistance. Now you can get heatsinks of very many shapes. Now this one has a much larger surface area, so that the thermal resistance is much lower than this one. Consequently, you can get by with a much lighter heatsink, while here with the larger thermal resistance, you need more weight. So the conclusion is that it's better to get a heating with a large surface area as possible. So what are the conclusions that we can draw from this uh, presentation? First of all, I think I've shown that simulation is a useful tool for the design and analysis of thermal cooling of power MOSFET, including for transient behavior. Also, I've shown the importance of the heatsink weight and thermal impedance and the effect of MOSFET thermal resistance in this uh, initial jump. And that there is a trade-off between the thermal resistance and weight. And the conclusion is that the reduction of thermal resistance is preferred over increasing the weight and having a larger thermal resistance. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.